Okay, I'll start off by asking all of you, how was your sleep last night? <laughs> That's exactly what was asked uh, by a person by the name Hataka in the Buddhist Sutta called the Hataka Sutta. So Hataka actually asked the Buddha, but how was your sleep last night? So I asked the same question, uh, how was your sleep last night? So, so. Mm. How many of you slept well last night? Slept well. Eh? How many of you so so? So so. Uh, how many of you didn't sleep well last night? I didn't sleep well. Uh, so those who didn't sleep well, uh, congratulations, you are coming to the correct talk. Those who are so so, uh, also you can upgrade the so so to better one. Those already slept well, I wonder why you're here. <laughs> uh, maybe you want to upgrade from well, uh, you want to sleep like the Buddha, you know. Uh, so it's like share market up down, up down. Uh, uh, yeah. So the, this talk, the focus is about on how to sleep well. Uh, uh, how to sleep well. So it's important for, for those with uh, sleep issues, those with insomnia, for those who are so-so want to improve their sleep. It's not for those with the opposite problem. Uh. Those of you who sleep too much, <laughs> sleep too much is also a problem. Those of you who uh, sleep too much, are very tired, uh, maybe another talk. Mm. This side is focusing on not sleeping well, the so so you want to improve the sleep. Mm. Asleep, the slide. Oh, asleep, it's like. Hi, good morning. Time to wake up, time to fall awake. Ah, nice picture. Hmm. This is in Malaysia. Guess what place is this? We stayed, ah, yes, in Kelantan. Surprisingly, there are a lot of uh, Buddha statues in, in Kelantan. Once I was conducting the MyFujin program in, uh, in Kubang Kriyan Hospital with USM, uh, so I took the opportunity to visit the various Buddha uh, statues in Kelantan. I heard this is the longest, the biggest and the longest reclining Buddha in Malaysia. Not in the world, but in Malaysia. Reclining Buddha or sleeping Buddha. Yeah. By the way, how many of you here, you heard of the word Sui Fat or Sleeping Buddha? Reclining Buddha, Sleeping Buddha. Uh, do, you, do you think that Sleeping Buddha is a different Buddha? You heard of Sakyamuni Buddha, isn't it? Sakyamuni Buddha, our historical Buddha, the one we learned in Sejarah history. Uh, and you also heard of Sui Fat, Sleeping Buddha or Reclining Buddha. How many of you think that they're actually the same Buddha? Same, same, just different name only, same. Uh, how many of you think they are different Buddha? Like Sakyamuni Buddha is one Buddha, then the sleeping Buddha is another Buddha. How many of you are actually not sure? Not sure, not very sure. Uh, actually, they are the same Buddha. Uh, it, it's not different Buddha, it's the same uh, Buddha. But the sleeping Buddha or the reclining Buddha is an iconic representation. It's an iconic representation of the Buddha's uh, quality of mindfulness, of peace, and of awakening. So not different Buddha. Eh? Uh, you see different different Buddhas in different postures. You know, you got the sitting posture, uh, lying posture. They are all the same Buddha. It just to represent the different virtues, different qualities. Hmm. So sleep is something that we spend. A lot of times, like almost a third of our life, yeah, almost our third of our life, uh, we spend uh, sleeping. And from a Buddhist point of view, uh, sleep is actually one of the four postures in our life. Uh, if you read a lot of Buddhist scriptures, uh, the Buddha talk about the four postures. Uh, what are the four postures? Number one is sitting, number two is standing, number three is walking, and number four is lying or sleeping or reclining which is related to what we are discussing uh, today. In many, 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 many suttas, the Buddha talks about the four postures. 
For instance, in uh, Metta Sutta, which talk about loving kindness, uh, radiating loving kindness, radiating a kind thought, kind thought, the Buddha says that we should be radiating kind thought while we are sitting, standing, walking, and lying. Not just sitting. Uh, very often, uh, when we conduct loving kindness, metta meditation, we are in the sitting position. I think most of the time, uh, anyone anyway, you have attended uh, Dr. Sri, Dr. Uh, Victor V's uh, metta meditation session? Call, uh, usually what is the posture? Uh, sitting, uh, uh, which is nothing wrong, but actually in the, in the Buddhist scriptures, uh, actually we should be cultivating loving kindness in all postures. Sitting, standing, walking, and even lying. So from Buddhist perspective, sleep is one of the four postures. Mm. So loving kindness, four postures. Mindfulness, also all postures, not just sitting. Eh? Mm. So we spend about a third of our lives uh, sleeping. Let's go into some simple neuroscience. Lah. Sleep is actually regulated by a part of our brain known as the hypothalamus and a hormone produced by the pineal gland. So there's a hormone called melatonin. I think some of you might be taking melatonin supplement. Hmm. So actually our brain does produce melatonin. We have a natural melatonin. Yeah. So when melatonin level is high, you put the brain to sleep. When the melatonin level is low, you awake. Uh, so now it's daytime. So daytime with a lot of sunlight, when it's a lot of exposure to the sunlight, the melatonin level will go down. So we are awake. Mm. When it towards the evening and night, there's less sunlight, melatonin level will increase, and then we'll go into a sleep state. Mm. So this is the natural way of how our brain regulates our sleep. How long should we sleep? Most people will say seven to nine hours. Am I correct? Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, the general guideline is seven to nine hours. A general guideline is seven to nine hours, but it's a lot of individual difference. Mm. For instance, generally speaking, as as we as we age, we will less need less sleep. Mm. For children and adults are younger, you need more sleep. Mm. So what I, what I would like to highlight in uh, in slide this slide uh, is a lot of individual difference. Uh, don't be obsessed by this seven to nine hours. Uh, in, in my clinic, I have many, 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 many patients who are obsessed with this number seven to nine hours. Ah, uh, so they have this uh, this uh, myth or this believe these thinking errors that I must sleep seven to nine hours or I must sleep at least seven hours, I must sleep eight hours. That's not true. General guideline is seven to nine hours, but there's a lot, a lot in your difference. And how good we sleep, uh, just I asked, did you sleep well? Uh? Oh, some will say yes, yeah. some of you say so, so, some will say not that good. Uh. Actually, I wonder what criteria did you use? Remember just now at the beginning, I asked, uh, you say so-so, I remember you say so-so, isn't it? Uh, I wonder what criteria did you use? Was it number of hours or there were other criteria? Oh, Alertness or subjective yeah. feeling. Uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, not, not just the hours. In fact, I would say overall the best indicator of whether the sleep is good enough uh, is, is the overall functioning level. The overall functioning level. Mm. If you can function, you can come to attend this uh, morning Dharma sharing, you can wake up, you, you can function, generally it's concerned good enough. Mm. If you cannot function, you end up with a lot of physical symptoms, you get headache, uh, gastric pain, uh, tired, uh, cannot drive, cannot come to the BGS center, uh, that is considered a bad sleep. Uh, so take home message, don't be obsessed by this seven to nine hours. Oh. Yes, yeah. So, yeah. Generally, I have like a good five hours sleep. Mm. But why uh, older is less? Like, generally, why older people? Uh, yes, like, less <coughs> less hours? Uh, 
I mean, I'm not obsessed with the hours. Mm. I'm just curious about why uh, mm. this older. Uh, even for older, it's just generally true, you know, not necessarily all oh, senior oh, students. Yes, yes. Uh, I suppose there's a lot of a lot of variations. Uh, it's just part of variations in life. Okay. Like why some people are taller, some people are shorter, some people are thinner, some people are fatter. Why blood pressure sometimes go up, blood pressure sometimes go down. It is part of nature. There's a lot of differences. Hmm? Hmm. Huh? I think I can't. Oh, I can't. Can I can use. I click there. Ah, okay. Ah. So this is the sleep cycle. Okay, this is the physiology of uh, sleep. Just start, I I shown you the I shown you that our sleep is regulated by the brain by the structure known as the hypothalamus and uh, it's a gland called pineal gland. Okay, this is the physiology. It's a discussion of sleep through the brain wave, through the brain wave. Okay? X axis is the number of hours of sleep. The y axis is the stages of sleep. Okay? A lot of uh, people have this wrong view. A lot of people think that when we sleep, poop, we go into deep sleep. Then you remain in deep sleep and then you wake up eight hours later. Uh, is that what you have been believing? Poop, sleep. Then remain in deep sleep and then wake up eight hours later. In case you think it's like that, it's actually not like that. Uh, uh, so what actually happens is Let's say this is night now. Let's say it's night now. Put, assuming you can fall asleep within 10 15 minutes, we'll go into stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. And the more specific is non REM stage one, non REM stage two, non REM stage three, and then non REM stage four. Uh, stage three and four are considered deep sleep. Stage one is considered light sleep. Mm. So what is light sleep? What is the uh, uh, deep sleep? Uh, in, in light sleep, actually we can still hear sound. We can still feel things. We are still aware of what's happening around. That is stage one. When you come to stage three, especially stage four, it's like dead. It's light dead, not dead. It's like dead. Uh, you, you can't hear anything. Can't see any kind of body, and it's no dream as well. It's as though like it's dead. Like. Huh? Mm. Hey, then do we stay in stage four? Then oh, eight hours later, wake up. No, it's not like that. <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> There's a word that way. Because uh, from stage four, you go back to stage three, stage two, stage one, and then it goes to a, a kind of sleep called the REM sleep. So we start with non REM one, two, three, four, and the REM. REM stands for rapid eye movement, rapid eye movement, and most of our dreams occur during REM sleep. Mm. So we dream. So after one, two, three, four, three, two, one, then we start to dream. And she when we dream, there will be eye movement. Eye movement, like, a bit eyes closed, of course. <laughs> and eyes will be moving left, right, left, right, left, right. That's an indication that we are dreaming. Hey, mm. so how long will we dream? Not, not the whole night, not the whole night. Hey, mm. so from non REM to REM is considered one cycle. Uh, and the cycle will continue uh, every night about four or five cycles. So from REM, then it goes back to non REM one, two, three, four, three, two, one, then back to REM, rapid eye movement, dream, then go back to one, two, three, four. Okay, do you notice that? Do you notice that most of the deep sleep is done in the first half of the night? Do you notice that? The stage three and stage four, stage three and stage four sleep only happens at the first four hours. The last half of the sleep are the only stage one and stage two. So it's very important to understand this. Uh, Cause a lot of people say, oh, I don't have deep sleep the whole night. It's actually normal. It's natural not, natural not to have deep sleep the whole night. Because most of the deep sleep 
is done at the first half. Uh, and do you also notice the red color region, the red color region, the rapid eye movement, the dream color region, the duration become longer and longer and longer. Do you notice it? Uh, and that also actually, if you sleep, if you sleep beyond eight hours, sometimes during holiday time, like tomorrow is slang or <laughs> public holiday, you know? uh, if you decide to sleep until 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, it means beyond the eight hours, uh, you will very likely notice the, the last few hours of sleep uh, is full of dreams. Uh, because you see, that you see, either REM or stage one. I'm putting more tired. Mm. Actually, it's not no, no point, no point sleeping until 10, 10 hours, 11 hours, uh, 12 hours. It's not efficient. Most of the sleep is done at the first four hours. Mm. 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 So, this is a very important uh, slide for understanding of sleep, understanding what is considered normal and what is considered not normal. See, it's a very important. I'll pause for a while. If you have any questions you want to ask, oh, I already see there's one question there. Yeah. Uh, can we be in the REM state without dreaming? Can we be in the REM state without dreaming? Uh, I will say most of the time, no. All of us dream. All of us dream. But whether we remember the dream or not, Ah, that depends. Uh, all of us dream, whether we remember or we don't remember, there's a different thing. Yeah, so it's very important because also I have patients who are very conjunct, you know, they're very obsessed with the dream. Some they complain they dream. Some they complain they never dream. Some they complain last time dream, now no dream. Some they complain last time no dream, now dream. <laughs> so my point is, whether you dream or don't dream, or last time dream or now dream, you recall the dream, you don't recall the dream, everything is normal. The only thing which is uh, can be a bit not so normal is when you have repeated scary dream. Uh, when you have repeated recurrent, recurrent frightening scary dream, and then then can be a problem. Otherwise, they're all normal. Yes, yeah. Uh, yes, like, uh, like, like that, like, when uh, I sleep, like, uh, like, when I sleep uh, uh, every time we can wake up, I, I got the same dream. Like, I think uh, this year, or, like, like, four times I like, sleep, I try to wake up, cannot wake up, like, can dream, dream, can wake up, like, doing the same thing. Is it because I think too much? Is I got this kind of dream? Uh, they say, like, can sleep really cannot wake up, sleep cannot wake up, like uh, in, the, in the dream, but like cannot wake up at all. So, is it? I like, think you need uh, Bante Agachita's service next Monday. Oh, blessing. No, no, joking, 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 joking. <laughs> joking. I know what I mean. Uh, that is called sleep paralysis. Oh, this is. Ah, uh, oh. uh, sleep paralysis. Ah, uh, did, did you hear a description just now? Ah. Yeah, this year four times already. Four times time. already. Uh. Ah. Is okay. that normal or not normal? Ah. I'll, I'll rephrase your questions. Uh. Uh -oh. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a condition whereby when after, you, after you sleep, usually at the beginning stage of the sleep, uh, then you feel very, very scared, very frightened. You may hear certain voices. You may see certain visions, which are usually scary in nature. You're very scared. Uh, then you want to say something, for example, you want to recite Namo Tassel. <laughs> you want to recite Namo Tassel or Budang Saranang Kacham and the sound doesn't come out. Eh? Uh, then you want to run, you cannot run. Uh, that's why Chinese expression is very quite like that. Uh, you will run, cannot run, you will move, cannot move, you will shout, you will scream, cannot. Uh, but you are very aware of the feeling. The feeling is fear, worry, very kind, very frightening. Is my discussion correct? Yeah. Yeah, okay. How many of you have a similar experience before? Uh, take a look. Take a look. Quite a lot. So you're not alone. Uh, is this normal or not normal? Uh, generally, it's normal. And this happens, guess, in which stage of sleep? Guess where it happened? REM or non-REM? Uh, with the basic understanding of sleep physiology, now can you guess, does it happen in REM or non-REM? 
maybe I have not given you sufficient information, a little bit more, okay? REM and non-REM, besides the difference in terms of dreaming and non-dreaming, is another characteristic of REM, okay? In REM, the muscles in our body is paralyzed. In REM sleep, it's paralyzed. So in stage one, stage one, maybe you can still move a bit. You can shake and move a bit. But in REM sleep, the whole body is completely paralyzed. It cannot move. Uh, so that is the clue. Uh, that is the clue. Mm. So in sleep paralyzed, the so-called kwai song san te kwai cha. <laughs> is REM or non-REM? Uh, very good. It happens in REM. Uh, and that explains the, the feeling that you cannot move. You're stuck in the body. Eh? And they also explain you cannot, cannot shout, cannot scream, because our vocal cord is also made of muscles. So all muscles are paralyzed. Mm. Eh? And why are you very scared? Because in the REM, REM stage, uh, sleep, uh, we can dream. Uh, we can have a very scary dream. Dream of uh, demons chase after you. People come after you. Exam comes after you. Your boss comes after you. Uh, you can dream. Huh? Mm. So sleep paralysis is uh, quite common. Okay? Common. It, it can be. It can be normal. It's common. I experienced that many times in my life. Okay? It's common. It can be normal. But it usually becomes more when we are under stress. Mm. So you say already four times this year. Yeah. But it's end of the year yeah. So four times quarterly a year. Not not that bad Ah <laughs> uh, yes. You usually it'll be more when we are stressed out. Mm -hmm. There's another uh, condition similar to sleep paralysis, but not, not so intense. Uh. Sleep paralysis is very scary, uh, sleep paralysis. All I know, I still have it. It's so scary, uh, I have the chan namotasa, namotasa, namotasa. Even though I have the, rationally, I know, ah, this one is sleep paralysis, uh, but when it strikes, uh, it's very, very scary. Uh, chan namotasa, namotasa, namotasa. It's very, very scary. Even you know it's sleep paralysis, uh, it's still very scary. Mm -hmm. There's another one is a bit uh, less scary. Each other when we are about to when we about to sleep at the beginning phase, uh, you feel that it's a jerk. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's a jerk. jerk. Uh, sometimes there's a fall. You feel like poop, fall, or jerk. Uh, that is called hypnic jerk. Mm. Hypnic jerk. Hypnic jerk happens around stage one. Mm. So usually at the beginning. Uh, uh, there is still some awareness. Uh, whereas for sleep paralysis is a brand. Mm -hmm. So far, everything I've described, hypnic jerk, the sleep paralysis, they're all normal, natural. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So why do we sleep? Yes. Uh, yeah. You got something to ask? Yeah. Yes, based on, on the sleep paralysis. Mm. Is it okay to wake that person up? Hmm? Is it okay to wake that person up? I don't encourage to do that. But what if that uh. person is yelling or shouting? Uh. During if the you're sleep. yelling and shouting, that means it's not sleep paralysis. Okay. Uh, it's not sleep paralysis. Mm. Because sleep paralysis uh, occurs in REM state. REM state is whole body is paralyzed. In but, fact, what? it's the nature's way to protect us. Imagine you uh, imagine you dreaming being chased by your examiner. <laughs> imagine you want to jump off the window. That would be very dangerous, isn't it? Uh, so it's a nature's way to protect ourselves. So the body is paralyzed so that it will jump off the window. Uh, so if you are screaming, shouting that that is not sleep paralysis, that could be night terror. Uh, nightmares or night terror. Okay, based on that, mm. is it okay to wake that person up? Not necessary. Not necessary. But if you're the husband or the wife mm. sleeping next to that person, you can. Actually, you, person, can la, you can. La, you can. It's not a must. More, more importantly, is learn how to prevent, uh, which we're going to talk about it after. More importantly, is how to prevent. Thank you. Mm? Mm. As long as the person is not in danger, la, it's not harming himself, herself, or harming another person. Mm. It's all right. It's not necessary to wake the person up. Uh, just be, just be with the person. Uh, mm. Yeah. Ah, mm. uh, uh, yes. Uh, maybe we focus on all the normal, normal stuff first. 
Uh, there's a lot of uh, abnormal one like sleep, walking, uh, all this nightmare we discuss later. Uh, anyway, sleep walking is also most of the time is normal. Uh, hypnic jerk most of the time is normal. Of course, it can be increased in stress. Yeah, sleep paralysis also most of the time is normal. It's increased in, in stress. Uh, sleep walking also most of the time is normal, especially for children. Mm. Okay. This uh, nightmare of sleep terror, if it happens occasionally, generally is also normal as well. Of course, it tends to happen more when we are stressed out. Mm. Mm. Uh, if you are talking about those watching certain movies or uh, sleepwalking and then they jump off the window, uh, those. <laughs> okay, we are gone? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, basically, they are all normal, but they tend to happen more frequently when we are stressed out. Uh, it tends to happen more frequently when you are stressed out. So, hypnic jerk, sleep paralysis, uh, night terror. So far, everything that we have discussed, uh, they are all normal, but they tend to be more frequent when we are under stress. That will also mean some of the solutions that I suggest later, like the relaxation method, a uh, relaxation method will be helpful for hypnic jerk, will be helpful for sleep paralysis, will be also be helpful for night terror. Okay? Mm. Right. We can talk about more details later, but at least I'll give you an assuring answer. Eh? So far, everything is normal. Tend to be more than we are stressed out. Uh, nothing very serious, nothing terminal. Okay. Mm. Mm. Sleep function, uh, I won't go into the details. Eh? Basically, is to recharge ourselves physically and emotionally. I may want to highlight not just physically, it's so to recharge ourselves physically and recharge our, ourselves emotionally. Uh, so just like we need to charge our handphone, uh, we need to charge our body and mind as well. Mm? Mm. So this one, I think, quite straightforward. Like, all of us know that sleep is important. Mm? If you don't sleep well, uh, all sorts of physical health conditions, all sorts of emotional health conditions, immunity will affected, all sorts of things can go wrong. Why do we dream? This one I'm more interested. Why do we sleep? I think I think most of us know that all oh, we need to sleep. Like, why do we dream is more important and more interesting. I would say more important, more interesting. Uh, many reasons. I would just uh, choose on three. Uh, okay. Dream is necessary for emotional regulation. You can see dream is like a counselor like that. <laughs> Not everyone uh, has the opportunity to go for professional counseling service. No? Dream is a natural way uh, to help us process our emotion. Mm. It's, that is one of the theory of uh, dream. In fact, the, the eye movement, the rapid eye movement in dream actually is used in a form of therapy called the EMDL therapy, the bilateral eye movement in email therapy, which is a therapy for trauma, for processing trauma. Uh, but we have a natural way to do it. Dream. Uh, so dream is like a counselor, it helps the emotional processing. Okay? Dream also help us, helps in memory storage. Uh, so throughout the day, uh, we receive so much of information. Uh, some are rubbish, uh, <laughs> got positive and got negative, a lot of rubbish. Uh, uh, so one of the functions of dream uh, is to sort out the information. Uh, uh, this one, rubbish, uh, delete. <laughs> Not useful, uh, delete. Or uh, this one, important to remember, a uh, stop. Uh, so there's another function of dream. Mm. Then one more is uh, dream also tells us something about our unconscious. Mm. It, it tells something about in our unconscious mind. For instance, uh, once I frequently dream about building collapsing. Building. So in my dream, all the buildings are collapsing. One by one, they collapse. I'm so helpless. I cannot do anything. All the buildings collapse. Mm. Guess what is the emotions behind this? Frustration. Hmm? Frustration. Frustration. Did you say frustration? Yeah, sadness, frustration. Ah, sadness, frustration, fear as well. Oh. Ah, so indirectly, it's, represent, it's, it's trying to tell me that things are falling apart in my life. Things are falling in my life. Ah, so dream also has a function uh, for us to tap into the unconscious. Okay. So dream is important, but that doesn't mean that if you don't dream, means it's problematic. 
Uh, this is a difficulty uh, when I'm trying to explain to my patients uh, in the clinic. But uh, having dream is important, has a function, but it doesn't mean that if you don't dream, it's problematic. If you don't dream, not necessarily that you didn't have dream. It just means that you don't remember the dream, that's all. Mm. Not dreaming and not remembering the dream are two different things. Uh, anyway, how many of you here remember that you had dream last night? Last night, last night. Okay. How many of you very confidently say you didn't have dream last night? <laughs> How many of you not sure? Because you attend the talk this morning, not before. <laughs> not sure whether you dream or not. Ah. So my point is whether you dream or you didn't dream or you remember, you don't remember, actually it doesn't really matter. They're all part and parcel of it's part of normality. Nah. Hmm. Yes. Uh, what determines we remember it or not? What determines Okay, good question. Uh, whether you pay attention to it? Whether what, what of it is whether you pay attention to it? Whether you pay attention to your dream. Okay. If I ask you to pay extra attention to your dream, for example, I say Every morning when you wake up, when you're out of your bed, the first thing is try to recall a dream and write a dream diary. Then you're paying more attention to it. Very likely you're going to remember. Pay attention, trying to recall, trying to recollect, paying attention. Then you'll increase the memory. Uh, and if you give a lot of importance, if you're obsessed with it, if you give a lot of importance to it, likely you're going to remember. Uh, or if you're very busy, uh, you have to wake up uh, the whole day, you're very busy, there's so many things to do. Uh. You say, my life is so busy, I have no time to go and recall my dream. Got it? Mm. Good. Thanks. Ah, now insomnia. So everything I explained just now, they're all normal, within the normal range. The insomnia is defined by inability to fall asleep or remain asleep. Inability to fall asleep or remain asleep or early morning awakened. It can be any form. Like. Some people they can fall asleep but they are interrupted sleep. Some people they cannot fall asleep and even if they fall asleep, they are still also interrupted. Some people they find it very difficult to fall asleep. But they can sleep, they can stay asleep, but they wake up very early. Uh, so when you use the word insomnia. It's a very general term. Like insomnia means uh, sleep challenges, sleep difficulties can be any in any form. And, and generally, it's only problematic if it affects our function. I'll keep it simple. Like. Uh, of course, if you are in a medical line, there's a lot of uh, a lot of details about classification, what is insomnia disorder. And not necessary for you to know. The take-home message is as long as it doesn't interfere with your life, you don't get all sorts of physical illness, physical condition, emotionally, you're all right. Not enlightened, but all right. You can still function, you can still drive. That means not an issue. Then, mm. 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 Of course, if it comes with a lot of problems like health condition, mental health condition, lead to anxiety, depression, you have to visit the doctor again and again, frequent MC, then become problematic. That only we call it insomnia disorder. And uh, all sorts of problems. You don't sleep well. Uh. One of the problems is uh, increased weight. Hmm. Hmm. People think that if you sleep more, you become fat. Is it that there's a myth? Actually, to balik. Actually, to balik. Uh, if you don't sleep well, uh, actually, more likely to put on weight. Because uh, insomnia increases a hormone called ghrelin and reduces a hormone called leptin. Ghrelin triggers appetite, leptin triggers fullness. So, so it's jarring around. If you don't sleep well, uh, appetite will increase. Uh, so it's, it's contradicts what we, we believe in it. Because uh, sleep also important for memory, very important for children. Children also for students, uh, you want to have better concentration, you want to remember things well, make sure you sleep well. Because one of the functions of sleep, one of the functions of dream is memory processing, consolidation of memory.
Okay. After this, I'm going to talk about how to improve sleep. So far, I'm talking about sleep, the basic physiology of sleep, REM sleep, non-REM sleep, importance of dream, importance of sleep. Uh, so everything is still under the category of normal. Uh, anything you want to clarify before I'm going to talk about the solutions, the suggestions, the way to improve our sleep. Basically, I'm going to do two methods. One is the, the Buddhist recommendation. Another one is the medical recommendation called CBT. Uh, I'll just pause for a while first before I go into that. Yeah. Power nap. Mm. Yes. Uh, as long as it's not more than as long as not more than thirty minutes, not more than thirty minutes, and should not be after three o'clock. Uh, so by definition, power nap, uh, it should go to just stage one sleep. It shouldn't be REM sleep. It shouldn't be stage four sleep. Mm, let me just stage one, stage two. That's the definition of a uh, nap. Mm, yes, less than half an hour, not beyond 3 p.m. You understand? Uh, uh, I want to ask why. <laughs> because if you sleep, if you nap after 3 p.m., it will disrupt the sleep at night. Ah, can I? Mm. Okay, any more quick questions before I go on? Yes, yeah. Uh, Dr. Pang, just now you say that old people need less sleep. What is the least uh, sleep that the old people need so that the body can function? Senior properly? citizen, lah. Senior ah. citizen, lah. Mm. Yeah. Again, there's there's no hard and fast rule, ah. But you want to give me a, a you want me to give you a general answer, the least one. I would say not not less than five hours. Well, that's quite a lot also for a person who suffer from insomnia. Five ah, hours. Okay, but let me let me uh, let me clarify, ah. Uh. When I say five hours, uh, when I say five hours, uh, you, you should ask me, uh, especially after I explain to you the physiology of sleep, uh, the REM and non-REM, uh, you should ask me five hours, how you count five hours? Mm. How do you find? <laughs> it's very important. Uh, five hours uh, is the entire duration, include REM, include non-REM, include stage one and stage two. Mm. Uh, so I'll tell you, the, the most common problem uh, is uh, people define the number of hours of sleep, they define it by the number of hours of deep sleep. Mm. Deep sleep. Mm. So you want five hours of deep sleep, uh, ah, susah lah, please, susah lah. <laughs> ah. eh, but remember, sleep includes stage one sleep. And what is stage one sleep? Uh? Actually, when we were doing puja just now in the relaxed stage, uh, that's already almost stage one sleep. Uh, if you are not asleep, you listen to chanting, it's deep stage one sleep. If you cannot sleep, you do some yoga, stretching, do a little bit of mindful breathing, that's already stage one sleep. Mm. So meaning as long as you are lying on the bed with yeah. the intention of going to sleep, though cannot sleep with the white eyes wide open, it is considered... It's already sleep, you uh -huh. lie on the bed, you don't worry. Uh -huh. <laughs> you don't worry, you just rest. It's already stage one sleep. Okay. Uh, so you include that, you uh -huh. include that in the calculation. So I think about five hours is reasonable. Lah. Yeah, that is more uh -huh. comforting. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Pang. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, like, uh, Stage half sleep. Uh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like music, listening to music, but in uh, a very relaxed stage. Uh, mm. So listening to music, but listening to listening depends on music. If you listen to Meta Chan, yeah. Uh, yes, I would say that is equivalent is close to stage one sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're watching something because of the blue light, very stimulating, uh, it may not be helpful. But listening to music because there is no visual stimulation, I will say, yeah, that is close enough to stage one. But not heavy metal music. Okay, I see. Okay. Yep. Uh, mm, Thank okay. you. I will go. Uh, some of our questions are actually covered under CBTI. Okay. How about meditating and doing four hours? Hmm? Ah, generally, the more we meditate, the more we meditate, the less we will need sleep. Hmm. Because meditation, meditation is at least stage one. Meditation is at least 
stage one. Uh, if you can meditate up to the jhana level, ah, you have to attend Bhante Agajisa, you can meditate to jhana stage one, stage two, stage three. Uh, I would say that is even beyond deep sleep. Uh. Uh, maybe jhana is around stage one. If you go jhana three, uh, it's, it's even beyond the deep stage three and stage four. Uh. Hey, no need to sleep so much. <laughs> uh, the, the, Buddha, the Buddha slept only about two hours, max two hours. Uh, but he spent a lot of time in uh, deep meditation. In jhana 1, jhana 2, jhana 3, jhana 4. Uh, I would say jhana 4 is beyond the stage 3 and stage 4. Huh? Mm, good. Some people uh, like, like this, all become this one. Cannot this one. Uh, as I said, the insomnia is only problematic when it interferes with our life. It affects our physical health, it affects our emotional health, it affects our function. Uh, so you have to ask them when they say light, uh, what do they mean by light? Is it number of hours? Is it by functioning? This, this is the most important part. Huh? Uh, maybe you don't remember maybe you don't remember you fall into this state. Uh, so the sleep and remembering the sleep are two different things. Uh, in fact, there's a condition. There's a condition called paradoxical insomnia. There's a condition called paradoxical insomnia. It's not very difficult to treat. Okay? Paradoxical insomnia, basically, actually you slept good enough. Not perfect, not perfect. Not like the Buddha, not perfect, but it's good enough. But you don't recall that you actually slept. Yeah, it's called paradoxical uh, insomnia. That means paradoxical means you think it's insomnia, actually it's not insomnia. The problem is you cannot remember. It's not quite common in senior citizens. They cannot remember. Uh, to, the, to the point where I have one patient, the family members have to do a recording, a video, a CCTV recording, uh, just to prove that you see your whole night, you were sleepy, you were snoring. The patient complained, no, I didn't sleep. And they were arguing, you know. So the family member got so fed up. It was CCTV record. You see, the whole night you were like a corpse like that, you were snoring like that, you know. Ah, but the patient said, no, I didn't sleep. <laughs> ah, so the take home, there's a huge difference between sleeping and recalling whether you sleep or not. Hmm. But you see, I cannot remember my how. Especially as senior senior, you cannot rely on the memory. Ma. Uh, so if you cannot rely on memory, what we are uh, something more practical for you to rely on? I will say functioning. Functioning will be more reliable. Uh, you can still drive over here, you can still do marketing, you can still wash, uh, do your housework, you can still study. And, uh, in paradoxical insomnia. <laughs> okay. CBDI. Okay. So I will share it with you. Uh, the, the Buddhist recommendation for sleeping well and also the medical uh, recommendation. I'll go with the medical one first. Okay? Uh, the medical one is called CBTI, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy for Insomnia. I'll say the non-medication method, put aside medication, the non-medication method, I'll say this is the best. This, CBTI stands for Cognitive Behavioral Therapy for Insomnia. I'll say this is the best non-medication method. C, cognition means thinking. B means behavior. Ah, so basically, in simple Cognitive Behavioral Therapy for Sleep is either adjusting the thinking or adjusting the behavior to improve sleep. So far, so good. Mm. A detail, no need to look. A details, uh, I put the details so that in case uh, some of you, you want more details, uh, I will give you the PDF. Uh, I will give you a PDF if you want to read the details. Uh, when you're here, I suggest you pay attention to what I say because I will highlight the important ones. Okay? CBTI is the gold standard of the non-medication. Non-medication methods for insomnia is the gold standard. Basically, it involves either changing the C, which is changing the thought or the mindset or belief system, or changing the B. B is the behavior of the life stuff. Eh? Mm. Mm. Uh, this is a very, very good app for CBDI, phone app. 
available in Android version and also the iOS version. CBTI, that's the QR code. So they're interested to have a good app, free app mm, to, to guide on the CBTI, Android and iOS, both free. Very good. Uh, of course, you cannot replace the doctor and therapist, la. <laughs> not to the level. Uh, but as a form of self help, uh, very good. You can just scan this. Or the PDF version when I send to you later. It's a lot of detailed information. Yeah? Mm. Mm. Okay. So under CBTI, there are five, five? Yeah, five major components stimulus control, sleep restriction, sleep hygiene, cognitive therapy, and relaxation. Hmm. You want to summarize the two components is either C or B. La. It's either C or B. C is thinking, belief, or mindset. B is behavior or lifestyle. Uh, you want to extract in the five components. These are the five components. Uh. Stimulus control, sleep restriction, sleep hygiene, cognitive therapy, relaxation technique. I will go into them one by one. Okay? But I'm going to make it very simple. If you want more details, you can go to the app or you go to the notes. Uh, I will give you the principle. Mm. Stimulus control basically associate the bed with only sleep and intimacy. No other things. If possible. Okay? So you want to program on the brain. Sleep is just for sleep. A bed is just for sleep, sorry. <laughs> bed is just for sleep, no other things. Okay. So imagine you do you do your work, computer work on the bed. You read medical journals on the bed. Uh, and you think about life problems on the bed. Then the, the, the brain will be very confused. So you want to sleep or you want to work? Uh, so you want to program. The brain, bed, sleep, no other thing. Simple as that. Mm. 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 General guideline. General guideline. Okay, so whatever guideline I get is the general guideline. In fact, one of the CBT principle, CBT yeah, principle, you always adjust according to your needs. Ah, according to your needs. Mm. Mm. Any questions? So it's not like say, well, you cannot, you must not. If you do that, you violate the CBT precepts. It's not like that. <laughs> uh, feel free to be flexible. Uh, how about you? Do you listen to some music or watch? Uh, uh, breathing meditation. Uh, Ah, and all those are related to relaxation and rest and sleep. Ah, so it is not violating this principle. Hmm? But mm. sometimes I still watch short videos. <laughs> ah, so I suppose if you don't have insomnia problem, it doesn't matter very much. Lah. If you don't have insomnia problem, it doesn't matter very much. Huh? Get it? But if you have an insomnia issue, uh, that is, is better to stay away from that. Mm -hmm. So for me, of course, the, the, the best is do some relaxation chanting. Uh, but sometimes I listen to some music. I uh, also watch some, some inspirational movies. It doesn't affect me. Uh, in fact, it's, uh, it becomes part of my ritual. It just listen to something and watch something just a few minutes. Uh, that is part of the ritual to <laughs> help me to sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, yes and no. Uh, I'll say yes and no. Mm. This is my personal view only. La. This is my personal view only. La. Okay. Yes, in a sense of meditation helps to relax the body and calm the mind. Then you sleep. Yes, in that sense. La. Okay. Mm. No, in a sense that we may condition the condition the mind. La. Each time you meditate, you become sleepy. You get what I'm trying to say? Ah, uh, you know what I'm trying to say? Ah, uh, because uh, so it's yes and no lah. You can uh, do your meditation, walking. I, I would suggest actually walking meditation. I, I would suggest uh, walking meditation. Uh, after walking, the, the mind is calm, then you sleep. Mm. If it's sitting meditation, first of all, it's very difficult. 
it is very challenging. Uh, and it, we don't want the mind to associate meditation with sleep. Mm. Mm. Uh, anyway, it's very individual. Uh, uh, if you if you do uh, if you do meditation, the, the two that I recommend uh, will be walking meditation. After all, that is exactly the what the Buddha did in this uh, daily schedule. Before he rests and sleep in the lying posture, we're going to talk about it. See, that's walking meditation. Uh, the other one will be loving kindness. Uh, loving kindness. Uh, so you want to meditate? I suggest walking, loving kindness. Uh, the rest, you have to ask your system like very all right. And the concern is we do not we do not want to associate meditation with sleep. So the daytime when we practice meditation, uh, you can stay alert. Uh, so yes and no, depending on your situation. Uh, okay. Uh, so that will also mean if you cannot sleep, uh, <laughs> don't stay in the bed for, for hours. Uh, so the general recommendation, about 10-15 minutes you cannot sleep. Uh, you wake up and do something else. About 10 to 15 minutes, if you can't sleep, wake up and do something else. Uh, if you don't wake up and do something else, then naturally you start to worry. Then you become very restless. And then the, the, the mind will associate bed with worry and bed with restlessness and become traumatized. And then tomorrow, even before sleep, uh, you're going to worry. You're going to, have, you're going to develop sleep anxiety. Ah. Eh, ah. So there's a principle of stimulus control. You want the, the mind or the brain to associate bed with only sleep. Not work, not anxiety, not fear, not worry. Mm. So get up, get up what to do. Uh, get up what to do. Ah, get up what to do. Of course, you can do meditation. You can. Okay? Uh, but I'm suggesting uh, walking meditation and loving kindness. Ah, okay? Of course, the rest you choose lah, up to you. But the one I highly recommend, uh, uh, walking meditation and loving kindness. Uh, then uh, read Ajahn Ram books. There are a lot of story books, Ajahn Ram books behind. Uh. Okay? I like that kind of books. You know? The one, uh, Good, Bad, Who Knows? And the one opening the door to your heart. I like those stories. I tell you why. Uh, because those stories, they're short stories. Uh, you, can just, you don't have to read from page one until the end. You can start from any page. And the story are short, it's only one or two pages. Uh, if you have a book that you need to read from page one to the end, uh, you may be too excited. You know? <laughs> uh, some simple one. Mm. Then when you feel that you are sleepy, then only go and sleep. Mm. Avoid, uh, avoid this kind of activity. Lah. So avoid coffee. Lah. So it's a bad idea, cannot sleep, wake up, I'm going to drink coffee, drink alcohol, I have a cigarette and smoke. Lah. <laughs> Avoid this kind of activities. Uh, I don't go and read news. Uh. <laughs> Unless you're going to read all the inspirational news. Uh. Maybe you got a BGF channel or Tsuti channel uh, or the happy, happy one. Uh. <laughs> the usual news uh, are all negative ones. Uh. So, one get, one. yeah? It's one and? One and? Oh, sorry, same, same, they are the same. Uh, so you don't need seven. Uh, and don't watch the clock. <laughs> this is a very happy, can I sleep? Uh, meditate on the clock. <laughs> mindful of the clock. No, that's not, that's not mindful in sleeping. Don't look at the clock because it will increase the anxiety. Uh, forget about the clock. Uh, go and do. Right? And remember, uh, this is very important because it, it's the mindset. Then we can do these relaxing activities. Doodling, journaling, read a jump drama, listen to music. Sleep has initiated already. Of course, it's not stage four sleep, but it's stage one. This is a very, very, very important mindset to adjust. And you get up, do something relaxing, any of this, it's already stage one. Uh, if you do loving kindness meditation and mindful walking, probably stage two. Yeah. I'm just going to ask that for journaling. Uh, because it still requires you to actually, you know, uh, put in some frameworks and write, craft your mm. narrative and all that. So mm. is that considered relaxing enough? Uh, generally, also many types. Lah. This one should be, generally, is more for those with a lot of worries. So there are a lot of things 
in your mind, you want to put it down into writing. Uh, mm. It is not, it's not journal, <laughs> journaling, publishing a medical journal manuscript. Please don't do that. <laughs> cannot imagine. <laughs> cannot sleep at night. Uh. <laughs> Take out my laptop and write a medical journal manuscript. Sure cannot sleep. <laughs> sure cannot sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mm. so those are under uh, stimulus control. In simple, you want to program the brain, program the mind, bed only for sleep. You cannot sleep, you get up, do something relaxing, and sleep. Can I? Okay. Sleep restriction therapy, second one. Okay, I try to explain in a very simple way. Lah. Sleep restriction lah, means uh, don't sleep so early. Lah. I try to explain in simple language. Uh, if, if you cannot sleep, don't sleep so early. Uh. Uh, okay, let's say you say the, I sleep at 10 o'clock. I sleep, let's say you say I sleep at 10 o'clock. Then I wake up at 6 o'clock. Actually, for 10 o'clock until 12 o'clock, I'm actually lying on the bed, you know. You are in bed, but you're not in sleep. There's a huge difference between in bed and in sleep. <laughs> You know? uh, so if you're in bed at 10 o'clock, but you're only in sleep at 12 o'clock, and you wake up at 6, they say, oh, my sleep quality is bad. Uh. Then the advice will be very simple. Sleep decision therapy uh, is, you don't sleep so early. Uh. Hmm. Actually, to be more specific, is bed restriction therapy. It's not sleep restriction. Got it? Hmm. Okay, I'll give you a, a, a one case. Uh. Okay. Hmm. Imagine this person, Jane, struggling with insomnia, report spending eight hours in bed. Eight hours in bed, but only sleep for six hours in sleep. Goes to bed at 10 o'clock at night, but falls asleep at 12 o'clock midnight. Goes to bed in bed at 10 o'clock. You only fall asleep at 12 o'clock. Picks up at 6. Ready? Uh, so not very efficient. Two hours you spend in the bed. And mm. get the scenario? Can you imagine? Uh, okay. So the recommendation will be you don't sleep so early, uh, you sleep at 12 o'clock. Uh. Why are you going to sleep at 10 o'clock? You spend two hours a bit. The two hours, I might as well do something else. Lah. You can do meta meditation, you can do walking meditation, you can do journaling, do some VGI work. You say I'll waste two hours in the bed. Ah, so you only start sleeping at 12. So if we can delay, uh, then we, we create a sleep hunger. It's a thing called sleep hunger. Mm. Sleep hunger, then by 12 o'clock, you're hungry, you need to poke, easy to sleep. Uh. Uh, it's just like if you don't take breakfast now, lunch you'll be more hungry. Uh, you will eat more. Same thing. If you don't sleep so early, you delay it at twelve o'clock. Poop. See what you Of course, original idea can be very complicated one. Uh, I just simplify it. Uh, uh, don't spend so much time on it. If if your sleep efficiency is poor. Like eight hours, I only sleep for six hours. Two hours is uh, wasting time on bed. Hmm? Hmm. Hmm. Of course, when I give this suggestion, a lot of, a lot of patients, uh, they don't know what to do, especially for senior citizens, you know. They don't know what to do at night. I don't want to do, refer back to the list. Uh. Uh, refer back to the list. Uh, refer back to the list. Hmm. Hmm? Then you delay, delay, delay. Until you're sleepy, they only go and sleep. Mm. And I define sleepy, I have to define sleepy because a lot of people, they cannot differentiate between sleepy and tired. There's a difference between sleepy and tired. The key difference is in, in, in sleepy, eyelids heavy, frequent yawning, and you can feel the sleep hunger. Tired a bit different. Uh, you, you might be feeling a bit tired now and you're sitting, sitting here for some time. Uh, but you might not be sleepy. Uh, so you wait for uh, you wait until 
Yeah, tired, delay, 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 delay. Uh, how much the delay is a bit subjective. Lah. Of course, if you have a professional cons consultation, we can help you to calculate. Lah. Uh, but you want a general principle is don't sleep so early. Lah. Don't sleep early, sleep a bit later. So you generate the sleep hunger and hopefully when you sleep a bit later, lah, poof, just sleep. Mm. Then, mm. Uh, mm. sleep hygiene. Sleep hygiene is basically all the healthy habits. Uh, healthy habits. Class, uh, common sense, don't smoke, don't take coffee, alcohol, uh, all these are uh, not helpful. Mm. But some people say, well, I take a little bit of alcohol, a little bit of alcohol can sleep better. Uh. Uh, alcohol can help us to sleep faster. It's true, alcohol can help us to sleep faster, but it has other problems. The sleep tends to be interrupted. And when you wake up, you don't wake up fresh. And alcohol is also a diuretic. It passes a lot of urine. And they wake up very frequently at night to pass urine. Alcohol long term, it develops tolerance like a lot of uh, health conditions. Mm? Mm. So sleep hygiene, uh, all the healthy habits. Uh, don't do this, don't do that. Encourage this, encourage that. Yeah. Mm. Sleep around the same time, roughly around the same time, plus minus half an hour to one hour. Even though it's a public holiday tomorrow, <laughs> the, the, the changes shouldn't be more than one hour. Mm? Mm. Has certain rituals, uh, engage in relaxing pre-sleep rituals, certain rituals, uh, like do some chanting, read Ajahn Brahm's book, or change into pyjamas, do a baby a walkie. These are rituals, you know, rituals. Uh, uh, so that the, the, the brain is programmed already. Ah, each time you read Ajahn Brahm, I sleep. Change pyjama, I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> These are rituals. Uh, I look at the Buddha asleep. Uh, offer candle the Buddha asleep. So it's like telling the brain program. Uh, it's a physical ritual. These are all healthy. Mm. Because conducive environment, not too cold, not too hot. Uh, this one you customize according to your needs. Uh, some people like fan, some people like aircon. Youngsters like aircon, senior citizen, they like fan. Uh, some want blanket, they want blanket. Up to you, you customize it according to your need, whatever is comforting to you. Mm. Uh, minimize blue light. Mm. Mm. Minimize blue light. Uh, so if you think, oh, two hours of bed cannot see, can spend two hours on the bed and uh, <laughs> watch YouTube on the bed. Uh, wow. mm. Well, if you don't have insomnia problem, maybe it's still alright. Uh. If you have insomnia problem, uh, no, no. Sleep on the bed, then just now the gym place. Sleep at 10 o'clock, then mm. sleep at 10 o'clock, on the bed, then on the bed 8 o'clock, then 10 o'clock sleep. I mean, we on the bed, how do we know we go and sleep already? I mean, it was just automatic, but we, we weren't aware when. That means you don't have insomnia problem? Huh? If, you, if you say like that, that means you don't have insomnia problem. Lah. I mean, ah. isn't it normal you're on the bed already? Yeah, la, of course, we think, 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 or we, re we ah. recollect what happening today already. Then after that, it will just sleep already. La. But then, then wake up already. La. How we know whether we sleep good or no good? We don't know. Mm. That's why I said when you talk like that, that means you don't understand people who have insomnia. <laughs> okay. That means you don't have insomnia. La. To you, it's very natural. Ma. Ah, but you talk to people with insomnia, that is not the experience. They will say they actually suffer like hell <laughs> in bed for that one, two hours. Then only after a certain number of hours, maybe middle of the night until two o'clock, three o'clock, oh, then only they release from hell for a while. <laughs> ah, you go and talk to people with insomnia. Lah. Nah? Ah, the way you talk, that means you don't have insomnia. Lah. Okay, lah, no problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's normal. It's normal. Mm. Is that right? What if you have a uh, fever sometimes? <laughs> or what if you have fat? Hey, Chinese say a uh, hiti la, hiti sometimes. Okay, well, right? Huh? Mm. Nap already answered just now. Somebody asked about nap. Uh. Uh, so, nap is recommended. Recommended, but it's not a must. Lah. You must differentiate. There's a difference between recommended and must. You know? <laughs> Let me, if you want to nap, all right. Okay? So make sure less than 30 minutes. Lah. And should not be three. three. 
Uh, but if you don't have a habit of that, it's also fine. You want to nap, it's fine. You don't want to nap, it's also fine. <laughs> yeah. You want to ask something? No, eh? Okay. Hmm. I don't have the luxury to nap. <laughs> uh, uh, tomorrow, maybe. Tomorrow, maybe. Uh, hey, if I have time, I will nap. Hmm. Exercise before sleep. Exercise, the... Exercise. Exercise, the, not, not the too active one. Simple yoga stretching and uh, qigong breathing. Hmm. Go and play badminton one hour before sleep. Oh, good idea. Ah, <laughs> uh, ah. Uh, I have my... But every Thursday, I have a badminton game until 9 o'clock. Until 9 o'clock. Ends at 9 o'clock. Okay? I sleep around 11 to 12. So it's a gap of 2-3 hours. Mm. Uh, Dr. Bang, can I just ask, uh, you know, young people, uh, our children, they tend to sleep very late at night. Mm. Uh, it, I'm not sure what it's habit, but young people, you know, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. So we are quite worried about children not sleeping early. So is that something we must get them to sleep earlier? Because we always have this idea that if you sleep earlier, the body detox, you know, your blood circulation is better and all this. So do we just allow our children to sleep at two or three in the morning? They wake up nine or 10, you know, that's mm. fine. Is that normal? Is that okay? Mm. It is not, a, it's not the issue of okay or not okay. <laughs> of course, all of us know it's not okay. <laughs> so it's not an issue of okay or not okay. It's an issue of how you're going to convey the message to them. Agree? <laughs> uh, so my suggestion, uh, usually if the message comes from parents, uh, they won't listen. <laughs> uh, uh, so the message is correct. But if it comes from parents, uh, usually it doesn't work. Uh, so you can figure, I have to figure out some other ways to convey the same message. Like asking them to attend this talk. <laughs> I, I, I did try, <laughs> but they refuse to come. They refuse to come. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay, let's say we need for the snapping time. In 30 minutes, I get to go into like having a dream. So in 30 minutes times after I wake up, I know that I had a dream. So does that mean that I already entered the REM stage in 30 minutes? I'll say the beginning. The beginning. Mm. Mm. But rarely, if within half an hour, very difficult to reach RAM. Uh, because to reach until the RAM, uh, I forgot the time, uh, but it's more than half an hour. Mm. Very likely, I understand what you mean, when you go into the nap, uh, you will go to a state is like in between. It's like half awake, half dreaming. Half, half, it's a like half, half, twilight zone like that. Uh, uh, I think that one hasn't reached RAM yet. Mm. So I agree if you have a full blown like uh, complete movie la, whole, whole complete movie of the dream la, then I'll say it's, it's reaching them already. Uh, I think usually I need to nap. I think I need to nap one, two hours and then only I'll reach that. Uh, but the way overall one cycle is about one and a half hours. The entire RAM and non ram one and a half hours. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Personally, when I nap, when I nap, I don't really nap. La. When I nap, la, it will be I'm doing my body stretching, my breathing, my meditation. La. I go into a relaxed state. Mm. Yes. Just a quick question related to sleeping late, right? But if, if we are able to, like, I also sleep very late, but in the morning, usually I think functionally, I am not affected too much. And also, like, although I sleep late, but I do spend mm. my midnight hours, sometimes productively, sometimes not productively, la, but... There are moments where uh, often where I do use use it productively mm. to do work or whatever. I got parents here. Huh? Oh, <laughs> they gave up. <laughs> no, no. Ah, okay. There, there, there's a difference between general advice and specific advice. Ah, so sometimes I find myself I, I'm caught in the in this role. There, there's a general advice. There's also a specific advice. Ah, general advice. Of course, the general advice will be try to sleep early. Just a general advice, and you have to define what is early. Uh, and uh, I'm quite lenient with my standard. Uh, I say early is before 12. Uh. Especially if you're talking to youngsters. Uh. When you're talking to youngsters, uh, try to say by 12. Uh. Don't even say before 12. By 12. Uh. By 12. That's a general advice. Okay? So if, every, if you every day sleep at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, it's 
Oral number. Mm. Okay. But you want a specific advice, a specific advice is very simple. You just follow your system. You follow your body, you follow your system. If your system can tolerate, fine, no problem. Because I, I, mm. I guess the question is more of like this. Um, the time that you sleep actually affect the quality of your sleep. Meaning like, if I can fulfill that six hours, mm. you know, maybe uh, four complete cycles, mm. if I sleep three to eight versus mm. if I were to push it forward, you know, maybe 12 to, uh, 12 to six, or three to nine. Mm. So is there a difference? Mm. Depends on how huge is the difference. Okay, if you're talking about just the difference of two hours, lah. difference of two hours, lah. whether you sleep, I mean, 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock is 6 hours. Yeah. 10 o'clock to 4 hours is also 6 hours. Yeah. Uh, if you ask me, would there be any difference? I would say no difference for, for me. Uh, but a certain health belief system, Ayurvedic or something, they have a different belief system. Like maybe TCM, uh, to them, to me, no different. To me, there's a huge difference when you sleep when there is sunlight. Ah, that means you sleep six hours. I sleep. Uh, uh, eight, uh, eight o'clock until two o'clock is also six hours. You know? Eight morning until two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. And then it's a difference. Then there is a difference. But what if it's 2 a.m. to 8? Uh, to me, I think not much difference. To 3 me, to 9? Also hmm? okay. La. It's, it's, it's up to your system. La. Uh, uh, it is not the it's not the hour you have to understand is because during daytime morning there is sunlight there is sunlight although the total duration is the same but because of the sunlight you stimulate the if you if you if you regulate you change the melatonin yeah but what if we testing what if we have like the uh what do you call that again uh? the blackout curtains <laughs> ah. uh, yeah. okay. there's literally okay. no difference uh, yeah, it's, uh yeah. Yeah, can you, you have a point, you overcome the sunlight problem, uh, but you still have not overcome the psychological issue. The psychological issue is morning, every day we wake up and the world start to spin, everybody is starting work. Uh, well, if you don't have that issue, if you don't have that issue and you don't have the, you can put the curtain, that is fine. Uh, so my reasoning is because of the sunlight and the psychological, not because of something internal system, uh, which is the belief of certain uh, TCM and uh, Ayurvedic. Hmm? Hmm. Hmm. So which one, which answer you want, uh, depends yeah. on who you ask. Uh. If you like this answer that you ask me, you get the answer you want. Uh. <laughs> uh, I mean, eventually it's still, is you ask your system. Uh. Your mind, your body, your system, whether it works for you or not. So, talking about working mm. night shift, mm? would they have problems in that sense? Because if you work night shift, then you regulate, then you have to regulate. If you give the, the system time to regulate, yeah, to regulate. Mm. Mm. I know my system. Mm. 30 years ago, I'm about 50 now. 30 years ago, wow, no problem. That time, young, uh, young, uh, young doctor, uh, work on call on night. Uh, don't sleep a few nights also can tahan. No problem that time. That time you tell me about this sleep hygiene, I will say uh, not practical, uh, work as a doctor, uh, impossible. But now I tell you, I have to sleep before 12. I have to. Not, not, not because people tell me. Uh, we occasionally find that uh, you stretch a little bit to one, uh, but you can tahan maybe just one night. Mm. After that, the system cannot take it. Right. Mm. Okay. Ah, okay. My my suggestion. Uh, can I go on with the slides first? Uh, else, uh, no time to finish all. Actually, I'm okay. Also, you don't have to finish all. Uh, how about you? I let you decide. I let you decide. I let you decide. Let you decide. Finish first, lah. Ah, uh, okay. Mm. Can I? Mm. Nap. Mm. I'll, I'll go quickly, lah. The slide. I'll go quickly, so it give you more time for Q and A. Ah, uh, mm. okay. Food and drinks, lah. Uh, simple lah. This one on that side, encourage to take more. This one, avoid. Again, it's just a general guideline. Uh, it doesn't mean that oh everybody take bananas, you will sleep. <laughs> it doesn't mean that everybody take coffee, then cannot sleep. I have friends who take coffee, no problem at all. Uh, in fact, they say they have to take coffee, they only can sleep. <laughs> mm. It's just general, general, general guideline. 
Này. Uh, don't sip after meal lah. This is common sense lah. Uh, heavy stuff lah. Uh, I'll say at least at least two three hours lah. And it's just a general guideline. Just a general guideline. Uh, Yeah. Cognitive therapy basically just adjust the mindset. Adjust the mindset. Okay. For instance, if you believe you must sleep for eight hours, must. Ah, uh, then it's a belief system. You generate a lot of anxiety. Okay. Ah. Uh, mm. So cognitive is all about adjusting the the myth or the unhelpful belief about sleep. Mm. And it's a whole list lah. Okay. You want details? I'll give you the notes. No worry. I just want to highlight one or a few common ones, lah. Okay. For instance, there's one called catastrophic thinking, worrying that not sleeping that well one night will spoil the whole week. One night not that well, the wah whole week you know, God, it's called catastrophic thinking, lah. Not necessary, one, ma. You can refresh and recharge, back, one, ma. Can do walking meditation, can do loving kindness, and can recharge, one, ma. Hmm. A thinking must be at least eight hours. It's perfection. Must be eight hours. Must be eight hours. Must be before twelve. Must be da 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 da. Ah. I, I must remember my dream. I must remember how many hours I sleep. Hmm? Hmm. Uh, feeling worried about not sleeping and thinking you will not get better. Uh, get this emotional reason because you worried. You worried that wow oh, cannot sleep or then can never recover. Hmm. Uh, so a lot more. Then you got to ask your specific ones. What? What are your thinking errors? Eh? Okay, one of my friends. I show you one of my friends. She has this uh, belief system: sleep equals lazy equals loser. And one of my friends, lah. One of my friends, lah. Uh, you can ask yourself whether you got this sleep demon or not. Ah, uh, so for some people, they have this 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 program. If I sleep, that means I'm lazy. I'm a loser. Hey, see some of you nod your head and okay. I'm asking how many are similar belief system. If I sleep, that means I'm lazy. I'm a loser. Only one, ah, uh, only two, ah, uh, three. The rest denial. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Interestingly, ah, uh, interestingly, ah, uh, for the three who put out your hand, ah, uh, in one of the Buddhist sutta, Mara. You know, in Buddhism, Mara is the embodiment of the evil one. Ah. The Mara touch out the Buddha with exactly the same thoughts. Ah, so in this uh, sutta called the Supati Sutta, ah, so the Mara went to the Buddha and touch out the Buddha. So the Buddha was sleeping. Ah. His, his time is uh, around night, night time, the one two hours. No. Ah, so the Mara accused the Buddha of being lazy and sleeping like a loser. Ah, of course, the Buddha not swayed by the Mara lah. Ah. So the the Buddha said in, in contemporarily I paraphrasing lah is like oh Yamara is it why you so kepo you why you so busy body I sleep man not your problem man I already enlightened already man I done all my job already why I cannot sleep <laughs> paraphrasing it in the more in the modern language lah uh, so of course the Buddha was not uh, influenced by Yamara hey ah uh, so the the more important question is what are your sleep maras what are your sleep demons. What kind of thinking errors do you have? What kind of belief system you have about sleep, which is not useful? Hmm. So that one you can think about it. Of course, we have a general one list for you to look through later. I'll give you the PDF notes, ah. Okay? But it's also good to identify a specific one. Hmm. You got maras or not? Sleep maras? No, can see very well. Then no. I want one of my sleep maras. Ah, one of my sleep maras. Ah, a lot of things not done yet. <laughs> ah, a lot of things to do not done yet. Ah, so there's a sort of form of mara, you know. Ah, so it's the belief system that I must finish everything first. That only can sleep. Where can finish one life? Cannot sleep. Finish one life. Hmm. Hmm. Because the last one is the relaxation method, lah. Easy. Any form of relaxation, if you are Buddhist, easy lah. Ah, you can listen to chanting. You can do walking meditation. Can do loving kindness meditation. A Vijaya got yoga class. You can go for yoga class. And then Qigong also got lah. I think last time got now. I'm not sure. Qigong classes. All these are relaxation. You can help. And then listen to music. Listen to music. Chanting. Hmm. All relaxation. You can help. The one I want to highlight is relaxation equals light sleep. 
relaxation equals light sleep. Instead of relaxation will support sleep. Relaxation is sleep. Mm. This is a very important mindset to change. Relaxation is like sleep. Relaxation is at least stage one. In fact, if you can go into the relaxation, it can go to stage two, stage three, stage four. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the five components, uh, so I finished CBTI. Uh, CBTI has five uh, components. Uh, this one, I think, uh, yeah, I think we should do, we shouldn't skip. Mm. So for relaxation, there are many, many ways. If you do not know any ways, you can learn this uh, body stretching, which I teach in the Mindful Gym program. Mm. I'll just share three postures. Uh. Mm. So this is for relaxing the body. Mm. So let's do it together. Simple one, you've been sitting for some time. Mm. So this one I call the tortoise style. So imagine you're a tortoise and you push your head into the tortoise shell in this way so that you produce some tightness around the neck. Do you feel it? Tightness around the neck. Okay, and then we're going to count from 1 to 10. I'll count 1, you'll count 2. Okay, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, then you let go. And you let go with the sound. Okay, let try again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. ten. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. ten. And very simple way of relaxing the body. Next one. Superman style, you push behind. Okay, it feels the, some tightness in between the shoulder blades. Okay, and tilt the neck a bit up. You feel the tightness around the neck. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. <sighs> okay. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Hey, okay, one more time. Stretch to the hip. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, one more. Push the CD. Push. Feel the tightness here. Tilt the head a bit back so you produce some tightness behind. Ten, eight, six, four, three, two, one. Good. Good. Stretch. Ten, eight, six, four, three, two, one. Ah, uh, what time? Stretch. Tilt the head a bit back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you can do the same for the other parts of the body. Okay. After the stretching, Maybe you can do a little bit of massage. Mm. Yeah, massage. Massage. Oh. Massage. Oh. Since this is for sleep purpose, I don't encourage you to tap. Just massage will do. Ah, massage. Ah. So before you sleep, you can do the stretching, 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 a little massage. If you're doing for sleep, don't do the counting. No need to count. And just now we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, so we're doing it before sleep. You can count in your heart, but no need to verbalize it. Because if you, if you talk, it will interfere with the sleep. 
you count inside one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, just to help us to focus. But we don't verbalize it. Because if you verbalize it, uh, verbalization will interfere with your skin. Uh, so stretch, 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 a bit of massage. Hmm? Hmm. If you are interested to go to learn the whole set, you can go to this link. I actually teach on the MyFujin YouTube channel. You can see the whole sequence of 10 postures. So just now what we learned is only three postures, but in total there are 10 for relaxing different parts of the body. Mm. Mm. So this stretching, there's another one. I call it the mindful breathing and body grounding. Mm. Can you imagine doing this while you're on the bed? <laughs> you're not on the bed now, uh, but it's supposed to be done. This is for sleep purposes, uh, it's on the bed. This is the stretching, the massage on the bed. This breathing exercise also is on the bed. Supine on the bed. Mm. Okay, on the bed. Breathe in. When you breathe out, you imagine you're sinking into the bed. And you breathe in. And you breathe out. You imagine it's sinking into the bed. We don't have a bed for you here, so you got to imagine. Uh. <laughs> uh, uh. And when you breathe in, let the tummy expand. When you breathe in, let the abdomen, the tummy, expand. Which I cannot show you in the slide. Uh, uh, but you breathe in, the tummy will go up. Uh, then you breathe out. Uh, you let go of the air, the mouth. Okay. And you repeat the process. Notice there's a number there, seven. Ah, so seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Then hopefully by then, see what Ah, if you're not asleep, then remember, even you're not asleep. After the body stretching, after this breathing, yeah, at least stage one sleep. Very important. Uh, if not, a lot of patients say, so I done already. Body stretching, I done already. Three rounds already. Breathing, I done. In fact, I done bonus. I, I done 20 times and 30 times. I'm still not asleep yet. <laughs> sleep has already started. Can I? Mm. But these are very simple ones. Yeah. Okay, shall we go on? Uh, when, when, can, when should I stop? 11.30 or 12? 11.30. Can continue. Okay. Wow. Okay. 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 Buddha's routine, very interesting. When I, when I was preparing this talk, uh, that's why I have to thank you. In the process of preparing this talk, I discovered a, uh, a lot of ways to practice the Dharma. Especially if you spend one third of our life sleeping. Uh, so there are actually many, many ways to apply the Dharma for sleep. Hmm. Buddha's daily routine. It's a Buddha's timetable. Morning, afternoon, then the night got first watch, middle watch, and last watch. So night considered starts at 6 o'clock. So just now we said the Buddha spent only about maximum two hours lah. Okay, of sleeping happens on the last watch, about two a.m. to six a.m. Hmm. Two a.m. to six a.m. Walking meditation. Then 
The so-called sleeper is rest on the right side in the lying posture. That's how the Buddha sleep and rest. Uh, the the sleeping the sleeping Buddha style. Uh, uh, okay. And then rise and sit in great compassion to survey the world in the morning. Uh, that is between two to six. Four hours, you know. And four hours, not all sleeping, you know. Four hours got walking meditation. Uh, so the actual hours of so-called sleeping. Maximum about two hours. Mm. So it's often said the Buddha sleeps uh, between two to four m, just about one or two hours. Mm. Mm. There are a few interesting things from this. First, of course, the hours of sleep uh, is only one to two hours. Uh, I think the Buddha is able to do that uh, because a lot of the other time is in meditative state, mm. slightly even deeper than sleep. Mm. Mm. And this lion posture, I'm very interested, lion posture. Where's the lion posture? This is lion posture. It's like a lion. And it described in the sutta, many, many in the sutta, it described lion posture as on the right side, placing one foot on top of the other, mindful and aware and focused on the time of getting up. Hmm. So you're mindful, you know? it's, like, it's like setting an internal alarm, you know. I will wake up at for Buddha is what time? Six o'clock. Uh, at six o'clock, the first thing is to survey the world. Who is ready to be helped? What teaching to give? Who is ready? Uh, uh, it's very inspiring. You know, look at the Buddha's schedule. Very inspiring. You know, and look at it. The his, his, the whole day uh, is just spending either meditating or teaching. Uh, fact. Uh, 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, a uh, special session for day was. Uh, we all sleep already at uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, 10 o'clock, hopefully 10 o'clock. Uh. <laughs> uh, 10 o'clock, it's time for day was, teaching. 10, or, 10 o'clock at night until 2 o'clock is teaching the day was. Uh, of course, daytime but teaching. Uh, means actual sleep only 2 hours. Hmm. Got the, this is called lion posture. So it, very often, uh, the, the lion, uh, is, is used to describe the Buddha. Uh, the Buddha is like a lion. Uh, he's described as the lion of the Sakyans. Mm? If you look at Asoka Pillar, if you go to Champaka Buddhist Lodge, uh, where I pass by Champaka Buddhist Lodge, you, you see this Asoka Pillar, like, you see the lion. Uh, so the lion is used to represent the Buddha. Uh, the lion's roar refers to the Buddha's teaching, which is powerful and transformative. Steep lion posture. Mm. Hey. Mm. It's not interesting, good to know. Lah, uh, but actual practice, ah, actual practice, uh, I found this particular sutta. Found in Anguttara Nikaya 3.35 Hataka Sutta. Mm. Uh, where the Buddha gave three advice, very important advice. Uh, so just now was CBDI, now is the Buddha's advice. What are the ways to sleep well? Three recommendations. First one, free from the fever of greed. Second one, free from the fever of hate. Third one, free from the fever of delusion. If you coin it in a positive way, is to be grateful and contented, be kind and friendly, be calm and wise. Okay. Let's translate the Buddha's uh, practice, uh, Buddha's advice into practice. La. I hope these are not just words. The words have to be converted into practice. Mm. So how? Do we be grateful and contented? What can we do before sleep? So that we can free from the fuel of greed. Okay? One recommendation is the using of beads. This is very, especially for senior citizens. Beads. So before sleep, so we use the beads. And we try to, in simple language, like it's count our blessings. Mm. It's review the days. And see what are the things we can be grateful for. Simple as that. Mm. So let's say tonight, if I cannot sleep, or not just cannot sleep, but I want to upgrade my, my quality of sleep. Uh, I'll take the bit. I will recall all the good things that happened today, including what I'm doing now. Uh, able to do Dharma sharing is something I'm happy. Okay? Able to lead the puja with something you're happy. Able to have to do the recording so that you can upload this online and better more people. 
Hey, something good, something happy, something meritorious, something wholesome. Mm. One, 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 one. Mm. Okay, if you're beginners, I'll say start with three bits, just three things, three good things. Uh, three good things. Uh, I, I use this formula called Google www. Google means search. Uh, so you search in your memory. Search in your memory. What are the things that went well? What are the things you're grateful for? What are the things you're contented with? At least three things. Okay, what went well? And Yahoo is rejoice. Uh, rejoice. Uh, very simple. Mm. I, I like to use beats because sometimes when you write, write also can, uh, but write is uh, you have to hold a pen, you have to hold, you have to write something. Uh. Whereas the beats that uh, you can off the lights and just vary here and just. Uh, you go round, after round, after round, and then you'll be smiling. Wow, so many good things happened to me. Wow, this one grateful. Wow, this one contented. Yay, yahoo, alhamdulillah. Wow, very good. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Uh. Then you go to sleep in this state. Uh. Wow, it's very good. Got it? Mm, mm. Simple, but got to practice. Huh? Mm. Okay. Then another one will be cultivating loving kindness. Yeah, many, many, many ways to cultivate loving kindness. I, I'm trying to suggest something which is uh, practical for sleep. Mm. Okay. So I uh, practical for sleep. That means uh, whatever I suggest that uh, can be done while you're on the bed. So just now, those stretching and breathing can be done on the bed. They're using the beads and recollect the things we are grateful for can be done on the bed. Correct? Mm. So practicing loving kindness also on the bed. Mm. So this, this is my practice. So before I sleep, I will sing this Rasa Sayang song. Because I changed the lyrics uh, so that it is more consistent with the Buddhist teachings of Metta. Uh, so this is how I will sing. Rasa sayang, hey, rasa sayang, sayang, hey, hey, may I, may you, may all be safe, healthy, and happy. May I, may you, may all be safe, healthy, and happy. Then I will wish my mom and my sister, I will say, may my mother and my sister be safe, healthy, and happy. So I visualize them sleeping on the bed with the blankets. I wish them safe, healthy, happy. Okay, then I'll sing again. Rasa sayam, hey, rasa sayam, sayam, hey, I, may I, may you, may all be safe, healthy, and happy. Okay, then I'll say, then may brother Bobby and uh, his family members, mm -hmm. all of them, plus the VGF community members, VGF volunteers, may all of them be safe, healthy, and happy. Then I'll sing again. Rasa sayang, hey, rasa sayang, sayang, hey, hey, may I, may you, may all be safe, healthy, and happy. Then I think, may all my patients, all my patients, all hospital staff, doctors, nurses, everyone in the hospital, may all of them be safe, healthy, and happy. Then I repeat. Rasa sayang, hey, rasa sayang, sayang, hey, hey, may I, may you, may all be safe, healthy, and happy. And hopefully by then, <laughs> ah. mm -hmm. and I program myself in such a way that even if I make, wake up middle of the night, I'll do the same. If I have a nightmare, night terror, I'll do the same. Even in my dream, I'll do the same. Mm. Got it? Mm. Okay. Then, that's now the recommendation three part. And then one is the cultivate gratitude and contentment. Second one is cultivate loving kindness. And the, the third part is uh, cultivate uh, calmness, calmness and uh, wisdom. Uh, calmness is the do the relaxation and the breathing. Ah, so cultivating wisdom, uh, I, I give you very practical and uh, very simple one. Uh, just read a Jam Ram storybook. <laughs> very simple. Mm, just read storybook. Just uh, just few stories. Ah, so you get inspired, you go to sleep in that state of mind. Hmm. This one. Which one? 
This one? Ah, this one is uh, this one is related to loving kindness practice. So in the not this one. One more before. This one. I give you all the slides. How do you take that? <laughs> I give you all the slides. Ah, so this is a loving kindness practice. The Buddha talk about the eleven benefits of metta. I just want to highlight that four of the benefits are, are related to sleep. Four of the benefits are related to sleep. Sleep easily, wake up easily, doesn't dream, mind will be serene. Yeah. So this practice. So loving kindness practice, not necessary. Actually sitting. That's nothing wrong. But you want to apply for sleep, so I think sleep insomnia, you want to make it practical. You can do it on the bed, do it when you wake up middle of the night, do it when you're dreaming. That's the most practical way I can think of. Yeah. This is my favorite. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> any posture. <laughs> is there any posture. Yeah. Okay. It's all right. Mm. Okay. Posture. Interestingly, there's a sutta called the Seya Sutta. The Buddha talks about the four postures of sleep. Very interesting. Mm. First one is corpse posture. Second one is pleasure lovers. Very interesting. I don't know why it's called pleasure lovers posture. Third one is lion. And the fourth one is uh, Buddha. Top posture is lying down on the back. Supine, supine, cops, supine. Huh? Back. How many of you sleep in that way? Cops, supine, back. Okay. Mm. Second one is on the side, on the left side. It's specifically mentioned on the left side. Left side, huh? left side. Okay. And lying posture, same as the one earlier, the one I showed. Okay. And the fourth one is the, called the Buddha's posture, the lion posture, plus uh, the mind goes into meditative state. First jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana. Mm. I'm trying to find out more about the first and second, and the third and fourth. In, in what context the Buddha talks about this? Uh, so far, I need more time. I'll be asking various Buddhist scholars on that. Uh, for example, I want to know the first posture, second posture. Are there any benefits? Are there any disadvantages? I'm doing more research, I'll tell you later. Hmm? But it's interesting to know that in the, from a medical point of view, uh, different sleep postures is useful for different medical conditions. Hmm. When the Buddha talk about, actually in this particular sutta, the Buddha is emphasizing, or, or, the Buddha didn't say that the first and second one are bad. The Buddha didn't say that. Uh, I suppose the Buddha is highlighting the best way to rest uh, is actually the lion posture. In fact, the Buddha slept in the lion posture and you go into deep meditative state. That is the best way to sleep and rest. Mm -hmm. But because I'm also a medical doctor, I also see things from a medical perspective. Uh, uh, yeah. So different health condition, it may benefit from different posture. So I just want to highlight a few. Uh, Okay. Any one of you with nasal congestion, nose allergy, nasal congestion, nose allergy. Ah, so I have that. Nasal congestion, sideways is better. Uh, 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 sorry, back, not sideways, back. That means the uh, cops, uh, supine posture, but you elevate. Wait. Works very well for me. It makes sense. Hmm? If you go side, uh, it will block the nose. Hmm? Mm. Snoring, anyone have a snoring issue? Uh, snoring, side is better. Uh, because if you will sleep in the back, uh, the, the tongue will fall back. Hmm? Mm. Okay. Uh, pregnancy, those of you have been mother's pregnancy, of course, it's always recommended. Left side. Mm. Back pain, put the pillow under the knees. Mm. So it depends on uh, how you want to in interpret the Seya Sutta. If you're talking about health condition, uh, physical health condition, you have to consider the healthcare professional's recommendation. Uh, mm. For heart disease, it's recommended more on the side, especially right, because the heart is more towards the left. 
Uh, so if we have health condition, consider these factors. Okay? If your emphasis is not on physical condition, if your emphasis is on spiritual cultivation, ah, then you'll be lying posture plus meditative state. Lying posture plus meditative state. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Lying posture plus plus going into the meditative state. The lying posture is just a physical posture, ma. How a lying posture? I'll show you the picture just now. It just uh, right or left. That's the memory. Right. Okay. And then the left leg on the right leg. Uh, the hands position actually is not described in the sutta. The hands position are not described. You need describe is on the right hand side. The left leg is on the right leg. Oh, it's like what you see, see in the sleeping Buddha. Eh? But that is a description of the physical posture. Uh, but what goes through the Buddha's mind? What goes through the Buddha's mind is this one. The meditative state, jhana 1, jhana 2, jhana 3, jhana 4. Uh, to me, the way I interpret this sutta, lah, Number three and number four are similar. Number three is more a description of the physical posture. Number four is the description of the mind posture, the meditative posture. Hmm. So if your intention is more, you want to go into very deep sleep, and not just sleep, you want meditative state, you want to cultivate mindfulness, you want to cultivate awareness. Number three and number four. If your concern is more of just uh, physical condition, uh, I just make sure I don't have nasal congestion. Uh. <laughs> so, uh. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Meditative state. Meditative state. Uh. Well, you can imagine meditative state. There are many ways to describe. Is when you meditate, you go to, into deep relaxation and certain wellness state. The relaxation, the peace, the wellness, the alertness that comes with meditation. Hmm. So in the Buddhist scripture, it described as the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana. Bhante Agajita is going to give the talk next, uh, uh, next Monday. Uh, in fact, not just the four jhana, he's talking about the pre, pre jhana and the inter jhana. You got attend? Hmm. Emma, attend? <laughs> Uh, in the scripture, as far as I know, there is no description about the hand. Uh, there is no description about the hand, only describe about right side and leg. Uh, it's not described up to you. Mm. To me, this is my personal interpretation. La. It's my personal. La. Of course, you can check with other teachers. To me, the more important is not the physical posture. It is the mind posture which is more important. You know what I mean? Mind posture uh, include what we were doing just now. When we're doing the bodies, uh, the, the body stretching to relax the body. You were doing the body stretching just now to relax the body. We were doing the breathing that is to relax the mind. Then we did the loving kindness. We sang the Rasa Sayang song. And then we do the gratitude, the gratitude uh, workout right, with the beats. Uh, all those are training the mind. Uh, so the mind posture, the cultivating of the mind, is more important than the actual physical posture. Hmm. That, that's my understanding. Uh, which I totally agree. Uh, which I totally agree. Uh, whether it's sleep on the left or sleep on the right or whatever, uh, up to very individual, especially if you've got physical condition. Up to you. Up to you. Up to you. But most importantly, is training of the mind. Are you in the loving kind of state? Are you in the relaxed state? Are you in the grateful state? Or are you in an angry state, discontent state, and restless uh, state? Huh? Mm. Okay. I think this will be the last one. Eh? <laughs> it's a bit funny. Eh? <laughs> if your husband or wife snoring, how are you going to communicate with your spouse? Like? How are you going to communicate with your spouse? Huh? Mm. I will show you the, the compassionate way and the not compassionate way. The uncompassionate way and the compassionate way. The non-compassionate way. Eh? 
Okay. Long compassionate way, eh? Okay. Your snoring is just out of control. It's obvious you don't care about how it affects me. Every night I'm struggling to get any sleep because of the noise you make. It's selfish how you ignore this problem. You need to understand that your actions are causing me a lot of stress and tiredness. You must take action now either by consulting a doctor or by exploring other effective solutions because I can't tolerate this any longer. <laughs> uh, this is a very <laughs> violent way. Uh. Uh, you want to learn you want to learn the more compassionate way isn't it uh, the compassionate way i found this formula which comes from there's a technique of communication called non-violent communication non-violent combination which was invented by this dr uh, marshall rosenberg a psychologist uh, i like this formula a very compassionate way to express four components we say what we observe say what we feel say what we need and make our request observation is your husband or wife snoring feel is feel tired at night need i need restful sleep i'm not against i'm not against you i need restful sleep request maybe find a way to stop the snoring putting it into a script this is point form huh? separate room possible maybe you want to suggest maybe i uh, i love you i care for you i want maybe uh, but i suggest a separate room but i still care for you it is example of a request uh, request let me go and consult a healthcare professional or stay in separate room mm -hmm. okay. putting into a script this is how it sounds he said it's a com compassionate one uh. just now it was a very violent one. it's a compassionate one dear lately i noticed your snoring has become quite loud at night that's the observation it's been tough for me because it makes me feel tired and a little annoyed. That's a feeling. As it's hard to sleep. Restful sleep is important for me to feel good and be my best during the day. It's a need. Could you explore some solutions together to help with the snoring? Making requests. Maybe sleep in the different room or go and consult a doctor. This one sounds much more metaphor, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You want to make it even better, uh, you add the sandwich method. Ah, jump around, always talk about sandwich method of communication. Uh. Uh, sandwich means uh, you add, add two more layers. Uh. Yeah, two more layers. Uh, you say the, you insert the positive, something positive at the beginning, you insert something positive at the end. Uh, it will sound something like this. And here, I really value the comfort we share in our home. Wow. Lately, I noticed your snoring has become quite loud at night observation. It's been tough for me because it makes me feel tired and a little annoyed feeling as it's hard to sleep. Restful sleep is important for me to feel good and be my best during the day. I know this isn't something you're doing on purpose. You add the empathy. Eh? It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Eh? Empathy. And I appreciate your understanding. Empathy. I'm not against you. I'm just expressing my needs. Eh? Okay. Could we explore some solutions together to help with the snoring with your request? I'm sure we can find a way that works well for us. It's perfect. Hmm. So I came up with this formula with the NVC plus the sandwich plus empathy. Hmm. So you say this way, eh? more likely the conversation will go well. Yeah. Did you put your hand up? No. Snoring is one section, non brand snoring not sure mm, not sure uh, of course of course snoring uh snoring like uh ah this one last slide lah. this will be the last slide mm. snoring of course snoring you have to consult a, a doctor specifically an ent specialist yeah mm. so this side is also very important you have tried everything you have tried cbti you try the suggestions from the, the Buddha, you try the relaxation method, you try the loving kindness, you try the gratitude workout, it still doesn't work. Ah, then, then how? Still can cure, no worry. Okay. Ah, so, get medical help. Consult a GP or a sleep medicine specialist or psychiatrist. In Malaysian setting, I think it's very difficult to get a sleep medicine specialist. Very difficult. I think you go and Google all the medical center, you type sleep medicines, especially, I think it's very difficult to find. <laughs> huh? mm. 
Uh, so you have to consider medical conditions lah. Uh, if it's a sleep apnea, uh, sleep apnea, you go to a ENT specialist. Uh, thyroid, sometimes the thyroid hormone imbalance uh, can also affect sleep. Uh, that you go to a hormone specialist. Menopause, menopause, you can get hot flush, or you can interrupt with sleep. That one is a gynecologist. Hmm? Uh, consider psychiatric condition. So people like me, psychologist or psychiatry, because very often insomnia is just a symptom. Insomnia can be a symptom of depression. Insomnia can also be a symptom of anxiety. Uh, so if you try all those methods or recommendations, you're not getting better if you assess for mental health condition. Insomnia is a symptom. Often it's a symptom of anxiety and depression. Uh, if you're on sleeping pill, I'd be very careful. I see a lot of people, they are on sleeping pill. And they're not aware they're on sleeping pill. Because it's very confusing. Uh, in Chinese, uh, sleeping pill is fun kao yin. Okay? But sometimes uh, they've been told, uh, uh, what you think is not fun kao yin, it's chan ting zai. <laughs> it's a tranquilizer. Uh, actually, fun kao yin is chan ting zai, chan ting zai is fun kao yin. Sleeping pill is... Tranquilizer, tranquilizer is sleeping pill. They're the same. Uh, so long-term use of sleeping pill is problematic. Is a big problem. A lot, a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot, a lot of side effect. A lot, a lot of complication. It's better to seek professional help so we can advise you on safer options. Mm. Okay? And very often in my setting, in my setting, you know, like in Malaysia, people they go to straight away go and see psychiatrist. Uh, usually by the time they come to me. Uh, if they come to me with the insomnia problem, usually it's quite serious. Uh, and I'll say most of the time, most of the time, if I want to use just CBTI or the Buddha's recommendation, uh, usually it doesn't work at the beginning stage. Uh, usually you need some short-term medication. Uh, when the condition is stabilized, ah, then you use CBTI and all the recommendations by the Buddha. Okay, mm. that's my last slide. Mm. Thank you for listening. Mm, question, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Mm. Uh, what about this uh, melatonin supplement? Melatonin? Melatonin? Uh, I would say generally, generally it's safe. Uh, generally it is safe. Uh, so melatonin is not a medicine. It's not a medicine. Uh, sleeping pill is a medicine. Melatonin is a medicine. Melatonin is a supplement. Uh, I would say generally it's safe. It's only a few conditions you have to be a bit caught, a bit uh, a bit careful. One is you have some bleeding disorder. If you have any bleeding disorder, or you are going for surgery, or if you are on certain uh, treatment for heart disease like blood blood thinner, uh, so there's one condition you have to be be cautious. Uh, otherwise, I uh, can give a try. It's easily available in uh, over the counter in the retail pharmacy. Oh, it's okay. Mm. I'm loud enough. Yeah. What about causing digestive problems? Little bit. Little bit. Ah, uh, but to to me, it's better than taking sleeping pill. Uh, so if you're not ready for medication, uh, of course whatever I recommend it, you can try. But because the next step is medication, if you're not ready for medication, uh, melatonin is one of the one of the option. It's like in between, uh, in, in between the non-medication method and medication. Uh, so in between, give it a try. I use that in my practice. Mm. I use that in my practice, yeah. Especially uh, young and fit, no medical condition. Uh, especially uh, young and fit, no medical conditions. Uh. Uh, if you have medical condition, yeah, you also got diabetes, you got high blood pressure, uh, uh, then I'll suggest a little bit more complicated. It's better for you to consult a healthcare professional. Uh, but if you're young, fit, not on any medication, no physical condition, melatonin to me is relatively safe. Right? Just, just go to a retail pharmacy, just give it a try. Right? The worst case scenario is doesn't work, that's all. Mm. Worth giving a try. Yes? Uh, okay. Thanks for the enlightening talk. May enlightening man cannot sleep. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this awareness, awareness is there, yeah. very educational. Uh. Uh, may I ask, with regards to the total number of sleep, ah. which you referred to earlier on, hours there. Can we, yeah, uh, number of hours, ah. can we total up 
Because sometimes you sleep, you wake up, mm. and you sleep again. Mm. Do we total up the number of hours? Oh. We do total up, but don't be too obsessed by the number of hours. Okay. Uh, in fact, it is normal to wake up middle of night. Just now I mentioned about the REM and non-REM, and yeah. there were four to five cycles in it. In fact, in between each cycle, there is a, we actually wake up a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, but you don't add up a few minutes. La. I, I'm concerned you're going to add up a few minutes, you'll be too obsessed uh, that you interfere with your sleep. Yeah. Yes, you do add up, but even if you add up, uh, don't be too obsessed with the number of hours. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, I heard uh, from your talk, uh, certain keywords like programming, conditioning, programming, conditioning, and yeah. then, uh, you know, something like conditioning your mind and, and change your mindset towards uh, a better you, you know, in terms of sleep pattern. So, um, something which I have actually learned with regards to conditioning, programming, and all that. Oh, and also, you mentioned a positive and negative Mm. Uh, thoughts and all that yeah um something similar to what i've learned earlier on with regards to mind control uh has there been any relationship between the two i uh, say mind control is under the cognitive part yeah uh, it's under or under the cognitive alpha part. level and all that uh, yeah. cognitive part yeah. uh, but there are many many parts okay uh, Right, thank All you. the mind related belief system, they are just different terms like conditioning, programming, thinking, belief uh, syndrome. They are all under cognitive. Like. So in psychology, the word cognitive power, all those. Okay, uh, thank you. But you can see it's more than just cognitive, like. there are many, many parts. Like. Mm. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, yes, I know. Yes and no. Mm. If, if you don't have anxiety disorder, if, if your sleep challenges is not read, doesn't come with anxiety disorder. Anxiety disorder with those with excessive worry, the very, very kanchong a lot. Not just kanchong, excessive kanchong. Uh, so for those with excessive kanchong, I don't encourage. Uh, that will make it worse. Uh, can, can, you feel, can you imagine how you can make it worse? <laughs> They will show me, they will do, they will diligently record and they show me the RAM period, show me the non ramp period. <laughs> how many hours they spend on stage four, how many hours they save on three, and they go analyze, analyze, analyze until you paralyze. They analyze until they paralyze. So it makes the anxiety worse. Hmm? Uh, but if, if we don't have uh, that kind of anxiety, uh, then I suppose it's fine. Hmm? Hmm. By the way, I. I don't think they have a very direct way, like those devices. Uh. I don't think they have a directly direct way of measuring the RAM and non RAM. By right, the RAM and non RAM is by brain wave. Uh, I think they are just using an indirect way. Like. For example, they can sense the movement, the, the bodily movement. So if you don't move, they assume you are in a deep state. Uh, but it's all an assumption. Uh, mm. Mm. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, oh, back to that uh, hypnia, uh, hypnic. Hypnic. Yeah. Yeah. I I noticed that you differentiate like uh, tiredness and uh, sleepiness. Is it tiredness because of that? Mean, like uh, the body is very tired. Like I feel like I want to have a power nap, but the mind is not ready to relax. Mm. Like not relaxed enough to mm. go to have that nap. Uh, that will cause the uh, hypnic. Is that one of the reason? No. No, no. Okay. It's not. It's not described in that context. I see. Uh, but generally, I have good sleep. But I actually have more on the hypnic. Is that a concern? I don't know. It, it, would it? You know, it's like quite regular. Especially, I'm very very tired. Uh, I I get that. Uh, it's normal. Normal. Uh, it's okay. my observation that overall, when we are more stressed out, uh -huh. tend to have more hypnic jerk. Oh, okay. okay? And I also agree when you're very tired, in a way you're very tired, it's also more on stress. Uh. Uh -huh. You're very tired, uh, actually you're more stressed out. Uh. Okay. Uh, yes, my, my personal experience, it right. tends to happen more. Okay. Uh, and not just the this hand jerk, sometimes the I'll tend to bite my bite my legs a bit. 
Oh, then, then you're more serious than me. <laughs> I'm not worried. I don't look worried, is it? Uh, because I understand the body physiology it is normal. I see. Okay. Uh, it is normal, yeah. Mm. Generally, if you want to minimize that, first is understanding. The, the most model is SEMA, cognitive. Uh. Understanding, it is normal. First. Second, you want to minimize it. You practice the relaxation, body stretching, um, the breathing. And loving kindness, go into a loving kindness state, go into the grateful state. That will minimize. No need to take medications. No need to come to me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Park, yeah. for the uh, more elderly people with uh, medical conditions like frequent mm. night urination, mm. so sleep disruptions due to those things, uh, mm. how, to, how to overcome? Mm. It depends on the exact challenges. Lah. If it's a frequent urination, uh, make sure minimize sleep at night. Hmm. These are common ones uh, for, for early senior citizens. Uh, you minimize sleep intake at night. I would say at, at least two, three hours. Okay? And then two, uh, senior citizens tend to have memory problem. <laughs> so as a guideline, you cannot rely on the memory of your sleep. You cannot rely on the memory. Okay? And three, Again, this, uh, there's, there's a tendency to be obsessed by the number of hours. And some my mother, like, my, my mother had anxiety. And, uh, almost, every, almost every week, uh, she'll say she's not sleeping well. Uh. <laughs> almost every week, she says she's not sleeping well. Uh. Uh, but she can still cook, can still do a lot of work. Uh, sometimes can do more than me. Uh. Uh, so these are the common ones for, for elderly. Uh. Uh, not so much of fluid. Don't think too much of fluid. Uh, don't rely so much on the memory and overall assurance. The only time you have to worry, as I said, is when they start to have a lot of physical symptoms. They get headache, they get gastric pain, they get giddiness, the blood pressure goes shoot up. That's the only time you worry. Yeah, just, just now you say about the smart watch. Huh? Mm. So not advisable to use smart For watch. For elderly. Yeah. Now, I know sometimes the children, uh, they want to feel a piety, la. they want to do something for their, for their mom or dad. Ah. I don't encourage. Ah. Huh? I don't encourage. Uh, there's a tendency to misinterpret the information. Uh, it is like, uh, you buy a blood pressure monitoring machine, mm -hmm. device. There's nothing wrong with the blood pressure uh, device. But how you interpret the blood pressure is the problem. Mm. Mm. And I believe the interpretation, interpretation of sleep is much more complex than interpreting the blood pressure. Mm. Yeah. Uh, blood pressure is very easy. Ma. I say, uh, I got, I got 140, 90. Uh, you go 200, then uh, 400. That. You can give a very general recommendation. You know? uh, if, you want to, if you want to rely on the sleep watch, uh, if you ask me now uh, how to interpret, uh, can I give you a general answer? I cannot, I cannot give you a general answer. Uh, if you ask me, your know, blood pressure uh, generally, how much? I would say, okay, uh, generally is 140, 90, 130, 80. Uh, if you ask me a general recommendation for sugar level, uh, I said the fasting sugar should not be more than uh, 7. Uh. You see, I can give you a very general, uh, general, term, uh, general recommendation. But this one, I, I don't know what to tell you, you know. And different company will say different things. Yeah. Different device will say different things. And then you come to me, show me how many percent RAM, how many percent non RAM. Uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I, I, I cannot remember a single patient, uh, senior citizen, uh, those who are 60, 70, 80, uh, who tell me, wow, this device monitoring very good. No, I don't think so. Youngsters, maybe. Youngsters. Uh, youngsters like that. Uh, youngsters. Yes. Okay, thank you. So the, the company will not ask me to give a talk. <laughs> I do support the device. So we'll take uh, one last question. Yes, yeah. Dr. Pang, uh. Uh, you mentioned a few symptoms. Huh? So frequent yawning, is that a symptom? And if we have enough rest, hours of rest, uh. and but still have frequent yawning, is there a concern? Generally, no. On itself, no. Just, just frequent yawning, no. Frequent yawning can be bought, bought, yeah, bought. 
But uh, the you frequent... ask to meditate, you don't like meditation, you're, about, you're, you're forced to attend the talk that you like, don't like to listen, you can be having frequent yawning. On its own note, but if you have frequent yawning plus excessive tiredness plus not sleeping well at night, then maybe. If you just frequent yawning alone. How to measure excessive tiredness? Hmm? When you say excessive tiredness, but we can still function, but feeling tired. Uh, so the tiredness is how we do self-assessment. Earlier you mentioned so long we can do daily function, it should be okay. It's mm. not insomnia and mm. we should have mm. quite a good quality of okay. sleep. I, I try to give practical answer lah, because it is not an individual consultation. Ah, okay, so I will give you. something which is simple but yet practical enough lah. Okay. okay, I will say this is a year end. Lah. If you go for your year end health screening, most many of us go for the simple year end health screening, the few basic things lah, like sugar, uh, cholesterol, kidney, liver, blood count. This is simple. But let's say these four or five simple ones, they are all right, and you're able to function. I'll say it's all right. Is it practical enough? <laughs> all right. ah. Okay, thank you. Yes. <laughs> You got to ask yourself whether sleeping is sleeping before child or sleeping at child. Not enough information to answer you. Mm. Maybe you can go and see, uh, go and talk to your doctor. Uh. No, I can I cannot conclude. Uh, if you want me to commit and conclude whether it's not a normal, uh, it is straightforward normal. I will tell you straightforward is is normal lah. Uh, when it is too complex, I don't dare to commit lah. Uh, because it, it require a, a a thorough assessment. Yeah. If you want me to give simple answer, it will be too simple. And one answer is go and you talk to a healthcare professional. The other one is try to practice everything that we have shared with you today. All the body stretching, breathing, loving kindness. You still cannot. You seek help from a healthcare professional. Mm. I think we stop here. Okay. Mm. So uh, I, I think even if we don't have sleep medicine, but I think respiratory physician is someone that we usually can also consult. Yes, you can start with respiratory, uh, but yeah, you can start with respiratory. You can. Mm. I, think for, uh. I think for for older men, uh, mm. the need to just rule out medical condition of. Yeah. Yes, you always have to rule out medical condition. Uh, that's why I say you have to yeah. Either a general professor, sleep management practice. Uh, if you're senior season, you go to a geriatrician. If you're not sure who to go to, you go to a geriatrician. For children, of course, you go to a pediatrician. Mm. And after you have visited the pediatrician, the geriatrician, the pediatrician the medicine, and you're not getting better, usually the next the next station is me. <laughs> uh, the next station is me. Uh, this is also very common. Mm. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters, for your question. Let us say, let's give three resounding sadhu to Dr. Pang for his sharing. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. sadhu.